Hello, David Zritsky for the Bond Experience. Happy, happy May the 4th be with you. What is a what is a James Bond channel doing talking about Star Wars Day and May the 4th be with you? Well, I'm here with my special guest. He's back. Yes, even after the first time, Simon Waterson. Welcome back, Simon. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for coming back today. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Well, I, I, I've got to start with our story because it's a good story. We always like stories. So, uh, you know, Simon and I, one morning we were chatting over Instagram and just having coffee together as we do every morning. That's not true. Um, and I had posted something about a Star Wars fans film that I had done when I was younger. And Simon of the Blue said, you know, David, I've, uh, I've done Star Wars films. I've done training for the actors for the new Star Wars films. Uh, why don't we do something for Star Wars Day? And I thought, what an incredible idea to mess the two. We've got James Bond's trainer, but chances are if you like James Bond, you love Star Wars. So we had to hear about this story. And I'm going to kick it off with a very simple question. It's my question. And then we're going to get to everybody else's question. Start with, is there any difference between prepping an actor for a James Bond film and prepping an actor for a Star Wars film? Um, it's a good question, David. Um, how I got to kind of like be involved with Star Wars is they're both actually filmed in kind of like close proximity to each other at the same kind of studio. So Pinewood is where they kind of like they're both filmed, obviously with Bond and, and with Star Wars. So I was I was lucky enough to be kind of like here, like on the um, on the lot. And I got asked to look after like um, a few actors who were a part of the kind of like um, the Star Wars kind of like fraternity. And um, yeah, and it kind of like, and it worked out. But in answer to kind of like your, um, your question, um, there's not a lot of difference as far as kind of um, prepping goes. There's just a lot of difference in how things are executed like on the stage, because obviously Star Wars is kind of like set in space, you know, kind of like, um, and with obviously Bond is kind of like quite, here and now and in live locations. So it's a, it can be a little bit different. And there's a lot of difference in kind of like the way that the, um, that the actors kind of like move. So if you're, a, you know, you're kind of like a um, yielding kind of like um, a lightsaber compared to kind of like, um, you know, in a, in a kind of like a more of a, a fist fight, there's a lot of difference as far as the conditioning goes. So, yeah, the fitness is slightly kind of like, different but the mentality still remains the same it's all about the performance it's all about kind of like the relevance and it's all about kind of like getting the actor to be able to kind of like like i've said before you know take it from the kind of like the gym to kind of like the um to the stunt room and then to the stage it was interesting too because i thought about this discussion and one of the things you said in our last interview was you know you and the actor will will take a look at the script and scenes that they're really going to need to perform from a physicality standpoint and then work around that as opposed to, you know, I want giant pecs and I want giant biceps. So do you have the same process where Star Wars, where you have a script or is there so much secrecy, they just do pantomime? Um, I have a little bit. I take a lot of my kind of like, you know, to be honest, I mean, I have a, it, it, it's nice to kind of like sometimes like not know um, because when you're a fan of movies, it's nice to kind of like not know like too much of the script, but I take a lot of direction um, from the um, from the stunts. So what they're going to be asked to be able to do. So especially like with um, with Star Wars, there's a there's a hell of a lot of wire work. So there's a mm. lot of like flying through the air. There's a lot of kind of like um, battle scenes. So um, I take a lot of direction yeah, from this kind of the stunt coordinator. And um, but and that's where I enjoy because that's when you, you can get like creative and um an innovative with like a lot of those kind of like exercises and um and think about the terrain that that's that's the biggest thing um yeah. with um say for instance like john Baega for for instance he did a lot of scenes like running through sand so you have to try and kind of like um simulate that in the gym and get that conditioning going so you can run through the sand and and it look kind of like effortless and seamless and i think that's the main thing is to try and get actors to be able to kind of like do things where it does look effortless and seamless how do you get a uh, 900 year old wookie uh in good shape yeah that's always well yeah i, I think I mean that the you know he it, to, to to play that role is is kind of like is 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 tough and um 
to be in that kind of like that kind of like suit for that amount of time is um, it's kind of like it's hard because you can imagine, you know, you like um, I don't know, maybe like going to work every day, kind of like wearing a fur coat in <laughs> and it's kind of like 45 degrees. Um, it's all about kind of, like, you know, the, the hydration and kind of like the nutrition and um, and the conditioning. Absolutely. Now, there there is one part in the movie that we have a question already about, which I'm not surprised it's being asked. So obviously, Kylo Ren, Adam Driver, was one of the individuals. Um, and there is a scene in that movie where he is shirtless. So is yeah. there a conscious decision? And I know, you know, we don't usually talk about the the. Uh, the visual aspect of it but you know do you have to go harder like a month before that scene i would just tighten up the nutrition a little bit mm. nothing to nothing kind of like too much i mean I, i've worked with kind of like um adam extensively and he's actually from the same kind of like um place that i'm from he's um he's a ex-marine and um so his mentality is locked in so he's used to high intensity he's used to discipline and he's used to kind of like executing kind of like everything he kind of like needs to do you know he's very he's highly motivated he's meticulous with his kind of like with his preparation and um we were it, it was a it was conscious though there was a conscious kind of like um let's tighten up the nutrition just a little bit kind of like yeah four or five weeks before and we will maybe add like a little bit more kind of like cardio to the day um but again i i'm very much like i'm not in that kind of like um I'm not in that headspace of depletion. I don't really deplete people. Mm. I try and kind of like give them as much energy as possible because like, like with a Bond movie, the same with a Star Wars movie, they are very long days. They, they require kind of like a lot of like high levels of concentration. Um, the costume is very restrictive. And, um, but you still have to be able to kind of like move. And like I said before, look pretty kind of like effortless and seamless and i think they execute I mean that them all those actors that within that kind of um within that movie within those star wars movies are just um that they're they're fantastic you know and they're there for a reason and they're all they're all kind of and like i said before they, they all kind of like they're all very compliant and they um they execute their kind of like their roles and and their preparation is um is phenomenal so we got a question from paul lavasser paul asks what is your what is your stance on supplements? How do you utilize supplements? Yeah, I, I mean, my my kind of like thing on supplementation is I, I do like um, I, I do use things that I think is are very difficult to get out of like um, you know natural food groups. So um, or if the days are getting long and you need like a, you need like a bit of nutrition like quite quickly. So like and I've been going down the road at the minute like plant based protein shakes which I kind of like, I really like. Um, and then, and then kind of like, again, we don't have, we're in the studio all day. And if we're filming like through our winter months, we don't have like a lot of kind of like um, sun. So like, you know, like having like a, a D3 kind of like supplement is kind of like always really good. A great multi mineral, a great multivitamin. And the biggest thing as well, I use like a lot of kind of like um, electrolytes. So I use a lot of electrolytes to keep um, people kind of like hydrated because because a lot of the um, you know the all these performances are in studios that are that are quite quite hot kind of like under under lights so a lot of kind of like the, the lights are kind of like make you kind of like um, sweat and then um, and then the heavy costume as well so if you're wearing heavy costume you need to kind of like keep hydrated. Yeah, that's fantastic. And one one of the things when you were mentioned last time, um, there was something that you mentioned everybody started purchasing when you mentioned it last time i'd actually been taking it for about six months and that was the uh the turmeric and ginger yes for good gut health yes so do you do you use the fresh stuff do you use powder like that does um, it matter i do i do use i try when if i'm lucky lucky enough to then be working there is normally a person who is normally right really good like like doing like the doing the fresh stuff on a daily basis mm is great but when i kind of get that i use like more the tea so i like to kind of like have like a good like um like turmeric and like ginger tea but if i can get like the shots and and um and stuff like that i um i do i do kind of like i do kind of like, like that nice and daniel daniel gomez asks a uh, question for simon does he have a preference for whey protein and if so what whey protein do you like um well 
with whey protein, I prefer the whey a whey isolate. So with the with the isolate, that basically just means kind of like um, fast acting, and that's kind of like that's what that's kind of doing. Um, it's um, it's like putting it's like putting ice on an injury internally when you use like a whey isolate. Um, and then I mix, I kind of like mix my kind of like um, protein intakes. I go, like I said before, I go like with a, with like um, a plant base and I'll go with a, a whey base and then, um, you know, and, and I try to kind of like um, so much like not through supplementation that I try and get like a little bit more like uh, out of like natural kind of like natural kind of like foods. So I try to kind of like have that varied thing because I think variety keeps the body guessing a little bit and then it keeps hold of certain things. In the evenings, I'm a little bit of the old school. I do like um, like a, a casein. So like um, that mm. would be kind of like um, something that I think, again, kind of like um, the nutrition part of things where that maybe congeals a little bit in kind of like in the stomach and is um, repair. Mm. Perfect. Personally, Robert, what? Yeah. And, well, and, and for your clientele as well? Yeah, completely, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a personal preference, and, and, and that's what it all comes down to, David, like yourself, yeah. you know, because d different kind of like foods and different kind of like sources of protein are not going to agree with everybody, and not everybody is going to have the same kind of like results. So it's good to have a, a, good, a good... Okay, that's good. And this is a perfect question for now. Robert Watts wants to know... Number one, are you coming out with a program specifically for beginners? And during this lockdown, if someone wants to start fitness and health, where do you begin as a beginner? I think, I think you can start. I, I like to think like, you know, you start with a pencil and a pad and you start to write down, you know, you have a box of kind of like the things that you really don't like doing to stay away from for the beginning. You have a little box for goals and aims. And then you have a box of exercise that you kind of like, you, you, you're quite comfortable with. And I think kind of like, being your own divisor and being your own kind of like trainer is, is kind of like, is quite important because out there is a lot of information and I don't think you're ever going to kind of like be comfortable kind of like following one plan or actually following someone else's plan. So I try to kind of like be, um, I, I, I do give that, that kind of, um, that information of, of use the information out there as your own personal toolbox and think that's a good exercise that suits me that's great for me i have that bit of equipment but i don't have that bit of equipment and then add it all together like start off nice and simple maybe 10 exercises 10 reps and then kind of like feel what the intensity is like and if that intensity kind of like suits you but the most important thing is that try and keep the workout um that you start quite similar for the first few weeks because otherwise it's very difficult to feel progression if you start to kind of like add and add and add, you never feel like you've reached a goal. You never feel like you've progressed. And I think the most important thing mentally is to feel that you've achieved something and that you've gained some pro progression out of it. Yeah. It, I, what I like to do is I like to add something every now and then once it's progressed for variety. You did a video today that's actually up on Instagram and on Facebook now uh, where you have kind of a Star Wars, you know, take through exercise. And one of the things I tried before this interview, which killed me, were those adapted push-ups of yours, which is just cruel. Yeah, and, and things like that are a little bit cruel. But, you know, you've got, you've got to add, like, like, you know, you've got to add um, something a little bit spicy in there, kind of like now and again, and, and, and test yourself a little bit and see kind of like where you are great. And I think movement is the most important factor, you know, that you, you, know, that you haven't kind of like out, you haven't kind of like trained out movement because that's what people have a tendency to do a lot of the time is um, which I feel is that they focus far too much on the aesthetic and then mm. the aesthetic kind of like looks, um, looks great, but then, but then they just lose kind of like all that movement. And that's what's most important for everyday life is being able to move and kind of feel free and, and have, you know, be able to, and, and again, and that translates well into kind of like film, you know, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to look amazing and then, be, and then having to sprint down the road and maybe kind of like pick something up off, scoop something up off the road. And, um, but you're, you're, you're like, oh, I can't get down. You know, you know, you should be able to tie your own laces, I feel. <laughs> that's, that's a good goal. You should put that in one yes. of the boxes. <laughs> yeah. Keep William making Leiser sure you can tie your own laces. Absolutely. William Leiser has a question for you. Do your clients do fasted cardio? 
Um, and what is fasted cardio for those that may not know? Well, yeah, not I mean it's it's kind of like something again. It's it's something that's kind of like being quite um, um, it's quite bespoke. And if it suits you, I mean, why not? If it suits you, there, there is no. I don't like to say like um, that. You know, nothing's nothing's off the table. If you want to, if you want to try like fasted cardio, it's a way of. Um, I mean, fasted cardio is, is tough though. I mean, I would do maybe cardio with a coffee. That that's kind of like where I'd, I'd be with it. I'd need that kind of like kickstart in the morning. But that's my kind of like preference. Um, like a double espresso in the morning is um, is great, and then a little bit of kind of like fasted cardio. But it depends on on kind of like the longevity of the cardio. You know, it depends like yeah. what. What is it like? Is it thirty minutes, like high intensity? Thirty minutes, low intensity? But yeah, I think it has a place. And if it suits you within a particular time frame, then then why not? Kind of like try it for a couple of weeks, see the results, like the results, then move on, develop it, adapt, and then go again with something else, and keep that variety kind of like going. But it's not something that I would that I would advocate doing every day because the problem is with fasted cardio is that your flipping between energy sources and if you start to flip into your um your muscular energy source which mm. you know muscle is your metabolism if you start to kind of like start kind of going catabolic so you're burning muscle tissue as energy you're burning away your own natural metabolism which is is not a great thing to do yeah good point this this is a very thoughtful question i, I could tell he's he's thinking about things so this is from uh, john edwards and John Edwards asks, um, for your clients, could be Bond, it could be Star Wars, could be Marvel, um, at the end of a film, do you keep them training up until the press tour so they look the part on the press tour? Yes. So we, we have, <laughs> right. to, to that question, to answer that question is yes. And it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily up to the press tour. It's just a consciousness to... Um, to have gone to the event, i.e. the film, and you film the film, then you can't just leave someone to their own devices. You have to bring someone out of, the, of that kind of like filming process and bring them down and down and down by kind of like having maintenance programs, making sure that they get, you know, making sure that we're kind of like we're getting a lot of uh, the same again, great nutrition kind of like back in there making sure that we kind of like we haven't restricted any flexibility and, and just basically getting back to kind of like normality because there can be a there can be a kind of like you know there is a there is a filming physique and athleticism mm. but it's like anything in um you know in anything and, and it's just it's a stressful environment and what what normally happens and i think kind of like probably happens to a lot of us is that when we've been working hard for a long period of time and then we kind of relax that's normally the time when we start kind of like breaking down and we kind of like, we get like all those kind of like colds and flus and we start aching mm -hmm. and we start, and it's because we've been turned and switched on that whole time. The body has not had time to be ill. And so, you know, you have to keep like things going nice and steadily and kind of like come out of the, um, of the filming process. Um, yeah. Like a hockey stick. So mm -hmm. kind of like go, the way we kind of like go in and then we come like back out of it. And, um, and yeah, and also as well, you know what, like, like keeping fit, towards the press tour is just kind of like a bonus you know you want to you mean because like um like on on any movie the press tours are, are, are quite um quite intense as well yeah yeah they're aggressive the travel the it, it is it's like a marathon almost it seems yeah. like so so this is um i'm gonna have to insert a selfish question of mine every now and then in between the uh the viewers so when you when you're doing these uh workouts with the stars do you often have to be on set? And that could be for Star Wars or even Bond. Um, for um, stunt sequences, like um, kind of like um, always. Um, that's that's just a kind of like that's just a kind of like a, a given. Um, for warming up, for cooling down, for prepping, um, and activating. I think kind of like activating is the kind of like. Um, mm is the kind of like the main thing. So we kind of like, we have, um, we are, I have an activation kind of like, um, routine or a warm up routine, um, in preparation for kind of, like I just said, for in preparation for kind of like stunts. So, um, yeah. And then, um, and then I would kind of like be, um, after the, after the particular sequences, I would then kind of like do all the, um, all the kind of like the recovery kind of like drills. So kind of like, you know, a lot of the, 
stretching and trigger pointing and kind of like a little bit of kind of like soft tissue work, like making sure that everything's kind of like um, great to kind of like then go again the next day. Were you, uh, I mean, you're, you're younger than me, but were you always a, a, a Star Wars fan? Yes, I think, yeah, I'm, I've always, yeah, but it's just, it's always, Star Wars is in, I think, regardless whether it's in everybody's life and everybody knows a star wars character or everyone's seen a star wars movie and again it's like like with bond it's like you know you're um you're from a particular era where a particular person was your kind of like you know was your kind of like star wars so whether it was empire yeah. strike back is my era whether it's kind of like on a bond whether roger moore was my era but again you know bringing it up to bring it up to date and um and relevant now to kind of like us you know i think they're all I think they're all, um, you know, kind of, I mean, my, my kind of like kids, you know, like um, they love kind of like Star Wars. They're not kind of like into um, Bond so much yet, but I, I, I think they'll probably get there kind of like soon. They're not quite old enough. How old are they? Um, like, like, yeah, you're young, six, nine and 12. Six, nine and 12. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's perfect age. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're, you're a good parent. You're a good parent. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so so the reason I ask, it was a directional question, is, you know, and I know you are a consummate professional. Many of these people that you train are clients as well as friends. But do you ever walk onto a set still? You know, I think Star Wars, for example, and you see the Millennium Falcon or you see something iconic. Do you do you still get goosebumps or are you like another day at a job? No, it's it's just like every day is just like, oh, my God. Yeah, that that is that is kind of like um always any any set on any movie and when you're kind of like passionate about something or or when you're really kind of you know when it's been part of you know your um it's part of your dna being brought up with bond and star wars and then eventually like you're walking onto it onto a kind of like a, a set it's just it's absolutely it's still kind of like mind-blowing and still gives you goosebumps and you feel very privileged that you're allowed to kind of like you're allowed to kind of like do that and you're a part of any you're part of any process that um that is happening like within within the uh, however big or however small it is within the kind of like the context of the movie i have to ask this question i think i know the answer but i'll ask it anyway um so kevin rogers asks uh was it kevin rogers it might not be somebody asks would you ever do a Bond uh, boot camp? Yeah. Jerry Jones. Yeah. I think it's kind of, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that have asked me that. I think it's kind of like, um, yeah, I, I do. I do kind of like fancy kind of like doing like the, the, the Bond kind of like um, boot camp and having a controlled environment and, and putting people through, again, that whole action, that whole action day of, um, you know, having, um, getting up in the morning, Doing your activation workout, going to work. Do the whole process is, um, it's a long, long day and it's kind of like tough. So, um, yeah, I would definitely think about like doing like something like that. I think it'd be such a fun thing to do. And I think there'd be a lot of people like interested in kind of like joining like um, like a, a Bond boot camp and just seeing like what it takes to actually be like, um, you know, an action hero. I'm, uh, I'm buying my plane ticket right now. I'm not allowed yeah. to, but I'm buying it right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. If you need a guinea pig, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, have you trained any celebs who are only plant-based vegan? Asked Brian Sheridan. Um, yes. Uh, on, on Star Wars, uh, Woody Harrelson, he's kind of mm. like, he's, um, he's a vegan and um, an advocate of that kind of like um, lifestyle. And um, yeah, and I'm luckily enough, lucky enough, I always, like I say, I always work in a great team. So I would never kind of like um, think that I'm a, you know, a consummate professional within that kind of like within that kind of like um, food range. It's always good to just mean you know, I, I have people, my go to people, I'd say, look, can you kind of like look at this and design something? And then I would like look over it and then and then and then talk to the client. And, and yeah, but to be honest, like when, when you've when you've when you've been like, you know, um, whether it's a vegetarian or a vegan or you kind of like you choose that kind of like that way of kind of like eating. Um, normally people are very, very knowledgeable because they've researched it prior to kind of like entering into it. So they, they've already done like a lot, a lot of research. So I'm just, I'm just there to maybe just add like a little bit of variety. Jamie Dickey asks, Simon, what are your three favorite exercises to do? 
And you could even frame it in the sense of if you can only do three exercises, what 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 should they be? Maybe. Um, I like I like um, exercises that incorporate different factors. So I don't know if I've demonstrated it before, but I would say like um, a like um, a squat thrust into um, into a pull up. So I kind of like I use I'm using kind of like um, different factors. So you know you got a, you got a plyometric there, you've got a bit of strength there and a little bit of like dynamic kind of like stretching. So I always use, um, I always use, I, I like exercises that incorporate like more than, so it's not just a, a kind of like um, a compound exercise. It's using, it's multifaceted. And that's what I kind of like, like, like I mean, again, if, if you understand like, okay, um, a deadlift into a squat thrust into, you know, all those exercises that, that I kind of like, I can add together and join together. And then it comes up with like a nice, fluid kind of like sequence so a bit of strength a bit of dynamic stretching a bit of plyometric i love it here's a great question uh do you ever have actors and we know at least one uh who want you from movie to movie to movie so you know they've got their favorite hairstylist they've got their but they they might have their favorite trainer i think so yeah i mean i think i think they I mean people kind of like do like that but what, where, the way it's been like working and, and I've kind of like, you know, I've managed to, um, you know, collaborate with lots of um, with lots of great trainers and professionals, especially kind of like um, especially kind of like stateside. Then they you know, we, we do kind of like um, we do kind of like swap our kind of like um, clients. So they'll have people coming over here and um, I like look after them. You know, I've done I've done different different work. There's a there's a great trainer. I mean, I've um, like Don Saladino is like a, a guy that I kind of like um, collaborate with like quite frequently, and um, you know, I I worked for um, w w with him. I've worked with like John Krasinski a little bit, and um, you know, not to not to kind of like name drop in any way. Just just you know, really professional athletes that are really into their kind of like um, really into their kind of like training and prefer a certain mythology and if that mythology works then, then 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 they send people to me and my mythology and if and if i think that the actor over here is going to go stateside and that they're going to be in a place where they could utilize a trainer who is kind of like similar to me in my mythology then i kind of like i send them there so um and i think the great thing about that is that when you when you do kind of like you swap you your, your people out you just get natural kind of like um it's naturally kind of like um diverse and varied you know everyone's doing something a little bit different so again it allows you to kind of like adapt and evolve and you get something a little bit different and it, you know and maybe you don't want to see you know my face every day and you want something different <laughs> yeah. variety for the sake yeah. of variety yes uh, this this is great and i'll tell you why i love this one um it's a great question but it's also from a gentleman named nicholas slayton who um, we have this thing called hashtag bond 25 fitness challenge. I think I, right. I set it up to you last time, which is great because yeah. people yeah. get motivated. This guy over the last year and a half, Nicholas transformed himself and he used a lot of your earlier books right. to follow these routines. So he, he gets to ask a question here um, and it's perfect for him. Obviously we can't quite train heavy right now in many cases, but any advice for people have, who have trouble putting on muscle. So Nicholas was thin and he's, he's put on some, some good muscle. Any advice for that? Yeah, well, I mean, listen, you've always got your body weight. That's kind of like that's the that's the biggest that's the biggest factor that you've kind of like got. So using variety and trying to kind of like um, you know with um, a, a great example is just like very simply just like kind of like push ups. Like use different kind of like angles. Um, use use kind of like different angles and elevation elevation of your legs. So you can you can elevate your legs higher and higher and higher. So using different bits of like furniture, and then you can um, you can definitely kind of like then um, use a variety of kind of like hand positions. So to target kind of like um, different areas of say like chest and triceps and, and shoulders. So yeah, just just your your body weight stuff is kind of like is 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 the most important you know kind of. But again, elevate elevating. So getting your getting your legs a little bit higher than like your head. Is going to increase intensity so um i think i think kind of like um that's that's kind of like a, a great way but meaning also as well like, like i said you've got so many got so many different I mean for getting hypertrophy 
per se. Um, lifting heavy is only kind of like one factor of kind of like the way um, muscle tissue is kind of like made up. You know, you've got kind of like, I mean, to get, not to get into it kind of like too deep. You know, you've got, you've got like fast twitch and slow twitch and even kind of like um, those that were running between medium twitch fibers. So, again, in this kind of like environment that we're in at the moment, it's such using that diversity to kind of like maybe kind of like to train different fibers within kind of like the muscle tissue, which then are going to thicken, which then are going to give you, you know, you know, a much, a much better kind of like um, depth in, um, in muscle. Nice. No, you can get it. I think people want specific, so you can get as specific as you want. So free reign here. Yeah. Uh, this is this is a good one too. So um, when you when you sit down with people, let's take a, a Pierce Brosnan and a Daniel Craig. As much as you have to focus on the physicality of the scene and obviously getting through um, an action oriented film, do you also have to analyze body type? For well, it depends. It depends on I me. Mean, it depends on for what you know, for what kind of like reason. And again, it's all about, you know, the difference between working with Pierce and Daniel is, is, is that one physique is going to react differently to the, the other. And also as well, we were in a different, you know, Pierce is from a different era. And, mm. um, and it, it was a little bit kind of like, maybe kind of like different then. And his, you know, his, his physicality is completely different to kind of like, um, Daniels and also as well you know you're getting in, you're starting to get into like especially like body types where you know mesomorph or ectomorph you know and and the way that the training is kind of like um, structured is um, yeah and, and I'm not going to be able to kind of like make Pierce into a into kind of like into a Daniel but vice versa I wouldn't be able to make a Daniel into a Pierce they're completely completely different body types and um, but their but their but their function can be pretty similar so even aesthetically they don't look the same their physique can, can probably do very similar things. They can move fast on the ground. They can get off the ground into the air. They can sprint. They can kind of like, you know, they can complete kind of like um, very complicated kind of like choreography in fight scenes. So again, aesthetically, not the same, but functionally, they probably be able to do the same things. This is a comment I want to read because it's a very nice comment and something, a kudos for you. And it's something you preach. So Robert Watts says, loving this interview, Hollywood actors achieve a physique, which makes us all think, I want to look like that, but there's no tricks to it. Anyone can do it. It's great to hear this directly from Simon. So that was a nice shout out. That's, that's, that's a, a nice shout out. And you know what it is? It, it's, it's blood and sweat. And, and that's kind of like I've, I've kind of said before, trying to change the narrative and the <laughs> perception of, of um, what I think people kind of like think actors kind of like um, are and they, they, they're mollycoddled and looked after and they've got all this. But at the end of the day, they've got to put in the work and they've got to kind of like, they've got to, they've got to go through the pain. They've got to, they've got to go through the sweat to achieve what they want to achieve. And my job is just to provide the most efficient way to achieve that. And, and ultimately the safest way as well. Yeah. So as a fan, I have a non-physical, non-fitness oriented question for you. Um, obviously, you know, things rightfully so have been delayed until November, question mark. Uh, how does that make you feel like when, when something is, you know, almost there and you think a movie is going to be released and then you've got to wait from April to November? Do you go, all right, let's stay calm or is a part of you a little gutted that you'll have to wait a little bit as well? No, I don't think so. I think it's I think it's a nice thing to you know you know what what's if you're a true kind of like um, if you're a true kind of like fan and a cinema goer then 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 you you kind of like you, you want to kind of like wait and you want to see it like on you want to see it like you know in that spectacular sound on an amazing kind of like screen and kind of in that environment with other people. I think that's the biggest thing that we kind of like um, that you know the cinema kind of like um, provides is that you're, you're sat in an environment with like-minded people and the energy in the cinema is what you, what you kind of like, what you kind of like want. And that, that's, what's really kind of like important, you know, and, and a lot to be said, you know, you can watch amazing movies at home, like, uh, and, and it feels kind of like great, you know, with, with kind of like friends and family, but you're not going to be able to recreate ever that energy of having like, you know, two, 300 people in the cinema all there for one reason, and then that big kind of like grandioso screen and amazing sound. You can't, you can't replicate that completely at home. 
Yeah, it's it's been, as you can imagine, and maybe you've even seen some of it, a hot, hot debate in the bond community because so many people, you know, they, they absolutely want to see it and they're like, okay, you know, I can get over the theater experience and do video on demand. But I think the majority of people say, I need the I need the preheating and pomp and circumstance of getting ready for the theater, going out to dinner, having some champagne, having my buddies there, hearing the oohs and ahs together. There's there's an emotional community uh, aspect to that for sure. Oh, completely, and in, and and it's just you never know the, the the reaction of you know when when you when you everybody's like sat together and a particular scene comes on, it's like. <gasps> And, you know, you get that, like you said, like that kind of like emotion, that kind of like emotion. And also as well, especially when you've worked on so many movies. I mean, I kind of like I like to go and, and to, to the cinema like everyone else. And to see that the appreciation of people when you've when you've like worked on a movie and it's not at a premiere and it's not at a screening. And it's not anything like that. It's just going to, to going to like, um, you know, kind of like um, a Friday night, 745, wherever it may be in um, wherever it may be. And um, people getting up, clapping, and 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 that's what's kind of like that's that's emotion kind of like right there. That community is like love cinema, and they appreciate they pre they appreciate like you said the process of kind of like getting ready to go out, and it's a proper night out. You know, it's a really kind of like it's a it's a great kind of like whether it's kind of like date night, mate night, whatever you kind of like um, want to call it. It's it's just a, it's it's the it's the process that's the most important. Well, I think we're going to give two more questions and then we're going to give Simon his wonderful life back. But this is this is a good one. And it's from uh, from a, uh, another channel called From Tailors With Love. And it's a question around uh, when you when you train an actor, for example, Daniel Craig, um, it, is there ever a situation where he might get so, you know, physical in his size that he breaks out of his tailoring? So the tailoring aspect, I know they make you know, some of the Tom Ford suits ahead of times, or do they tailor around someone like Daniel Craig and they don't say, Hey, slow it down in the gym. You're getting too big. Um, no, I, I don't think that. I think, I think they're, they're too smart. They're too smart for that. The, the, the costumers, they can let things in and out when, when, whenever they want. So it's quite, um, it's quite, it's quite kind of like easy. I think the only, um, I mean, as far as like not to give anything kind of like, you know, hmm. there, the, there would be a, a tailoring aspect is when, for instance, if there's a stunt scene and you've got to wear pads, then things are a little bit, then those suits are a little bit bigger because they've got to be able to kind of like wear maybe like um, protective protective equipment like underneath it or maybe wearing like a harness. So um, there are there are little bits and bobs where, you know, tailoring is a little bit different. Not my, yeah. it's not my, it's not my kind of like... Um, it's not my expertise, but that's that's just that's just an observation. Yes, and we've heard also, um, for example, a lot of the brands that we talk to say very often the costume department will order three different sizes. You know, so the stunt people, the pads, and everything can be accommodated. But yeah, everybody within their guidelines. I know uh, this is a great uh, last question. Uh, so obviously, leading up to November, you know, we've got um, a lot of excitement for Bond. But um, are you, would you looking, look forward to being a part of a, another Star Wars film again? Is that something that you would definitely want on your roster? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're, they're, they're really enjoyable movies to, to work on. Um, and they create that kind of like, um, that, that for me, that, that challenge. I love, I, love the, I love the challenge of, um, especially if I get like a raw actor. And, um, you know, and it's like... And it's great. I mean, that, that's what I that's what I kind of like love the most is is doing things for the first time with with an actor who is doing things for the first time, and um, to um, to not only kind of like help them in a way of kind of like you know this is this is what you're going to be asked to be able to do, and we're going to have to train so that you're kind of like you're confident in doing this, and um, that you're doing it unconsciously, so your body is kind of like reacting in a way that you want it to react to, um, mm -hmm. whatever scene that may be. But your face is then telling a different story. But your body is being able to, yeah. But in answer to your question, yeah, of course. You, you all I mean if ever I was ever asked to kind of like do another Star Wars, I would be on board like no tomorrow. I love that you're a fan too. By the way, it was my favorite yeah. thing that you answered today. Is you still get goosebumps because you're you're one of us, which is fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm, most most definitely, kind of. Um, 
I've just got a, I've just got a kind of like um, a few, a few regrets of kind of going. Oh, I should have been a stormtrooper. I know I should. <sighs> it's like, oh, yeah. Were you, were you asked? Well, you're, you're around that environment. I, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't asked, but I'm sure if I volunteered, it might have been me. There may have been something in it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I kind of like. Maybe I'll get an opportunity in the future. I have a feeling. I have a feeling that's going to happen. Simon, thank you, thank you so much for spending May the Fourth with us. We cannot thank you enough for your time. Truly, it's, it's an absolute pleasure, and um, I hope it was a, you know, a good insight into um, again, like a little bit behind the scenes of like um, fitness and film and the way it's kind of like married together, and. Um, yeah, and I hope it in, inspires. Again, inspire, inspiring people is my um, is my main thing. Well, you've inspired me to call you later in the week about the Bond uh, workout camp that we're yeah. going to ideate for sure. Yeah. No, but you've inspired everybody, so thank you for that. Pleasure, my pleasure, David. All right, Simon Waterson, thank you so much. This has been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience, and we will see you all real soon. Take care. <laughs>